it's not about us just individually. It's, a, it's the us, the wider us, all the us who wish to share. And we've got to try and predict how other folk might, other applications of the systems anywhere in the world might want to use this information. We can't predict it, we just put it into the formats that the machines can read. And it could be easy, except if we've got an active, engaged community, <coughs> we've got well-defined concepts, people know how to use these tools, everybody's engaging well with the standards, and everybody accepts it's not right or wrong, but getting improvement. Easy to say, there's a lot of effort involved in putting these things together. But it's really important and powerful investment. And a lot of communities are beginning to do this. Who's doing it? Has anybody here heard, heard of One Geology? You might not have known, yes, yeah, of course. Um, you might not know, but we haven't yet got a complete map of the globe and all its geology in one place that you could look at it. But here's an international project that's attempting to do that. And every nation's geological survey office has their particular view of describing the geology of their state, just as New Zealand does. Australia has their one, and Italy <coughs> has theirs, and, you know, Bolivia will have theirs, and so on. Um, the way to get these all together wasn't really possible or easy until some of these technologies started to come along. And it's a very good example of how one of these community schemas was agreed, and each one of the national geological survey officers now serve their information up in that particular form, in this interoperable form, and it comes up in real time into a portal where you can view it online. You can go back to your workstations and have a look at one geology, just Google it. And if you do, and you zoom in on New Zealand, you'll see the data coming as a transactional service from geological nuclear <coughs> sciences, contributing to that world map. And it's coming up as a web feature service using the technologies I've been talking about. That's interoperability. You're getting the data as it exists, the current version, the latest version, from the authority, and there it is coming right up in an information product. You can just zoom out and zoom into another country. You'll be going into another effectively another database down at the base level that will be translated in this sort of read schema so that it appears like this. And the same types of geologies get described. There's a, there's a consistent definition in that agreed community schema for the different geologies, even though the different geological survey officers might have their own descriptions down in their own jurisdictions that they've used for, you know, 100 years or so. But they all agree to map those to the appropriate agreed definition, and that's what's shared. And then it's shared in real time, and you get a product like that. So I'm just trying to give you some idea of the possibilities. Here we've got, now we've got an example of a definition of geology for the entire world, which is going to help um, better understand what is really going on on this little planet of ours. This particular quote I really like. Because I agree with it, it's all about collaboration, or as Shell puts it, coordination of organisational behaviour. That's, that's one of the biggest challenges we've got. But agreeing how we could do things differently, <coughs> it's agreeing this new, these new workflows, um, doing something about those percentages we, we saw at the beginning of the presentation. And what I'm just thinking about this, and these are the words that come to mind for me when I think about the challenge we have in front of us about learning to collaborate. Um, this, for the New Zealand strategy, that's across all sectors, government, local government, you know, the, the commercial sector, the private sector, researchers, academia, and so on, all coming to grips with the possibilities that are offered by using modern information technologies in a really smart way. And when you think about those sorts of words, to me they're, they're human responses, the things that people have to do to help make this happen. And 
it's about us at the end of the day, the us being the particular communities that we belong to. I was talking about a particular kind of interoperability. Interoperability that's about sharing meaning between uh, ourselves. So that um, if I go, I've got water courses in my database, and Victoria had uh, rivers in her database, how would a machine sort out that we Perhaps, potentially, we're talking about the same kinds of features. It's all to do with semantics, and that's why we have to agree how we describe things in these agreed schemas. So, putting information we've currently got, got just up onto the web, as is, where is, will get, make what we've got more accessible, but not necessarily make it repurposable easily or interoperable which is way out there on the, the right-hand end of our pillars for our strategy. So there's a bit of a journey that we, we need to take to take ourselves into this world. It's, got, it's a bit, some paradigm shifts have to happen. And um, so we're, we need to observe carefully just what other jurisdictions are doing and learn from other peers and not reinvent wheels and learn a lot of lessons on how, how to go about doing this. Thank you very much. That's my, my story this morning. And I'd like to say, I um, really appreciate you turning up this morning. You might have reflections or something about any of this, and I would um, really enjoy any feedback whatsoever at any level on any of the sorts of things I've touched upon, because I've only been able to just barely scratch the surface on some of these, uh, some of the things that I've mentioned here. But I hope it's given you a bit of an overview of you know, some of the dimensions to.